chair declares the House in recess, subject to the call of the chair. The House speakership is a mess, and it's not looking like it's going to get cleaned up anytime soon. After Representative and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise won the Republican nomination for Speaker on Wednesday over Representative Jim Jordan, the House has postponed the actual Speaker vote because it was clear that there wasn't going to be a winner. For some of the other possible uh, individuals who you think maybe could get to 217. Well, I think Jim Jordan is not out of the mix. I've talked to a lot of people who still support him. I've actually talked to Democrats who, who trust him at his word. I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Jim Jordan? I, Yes, I've talked to Democrats over the last week on who do they trust, even though they wouldn't agree with him on many issues. He is someone the Jim can, Jordan from Ohio. Oh yes, the Jim Jordan from Ohio. Democrats people, in Congress. Yes, they can work with him. And those that name I've one to, Democrat from Congress that trusts name Jim Jordan. Of people off the record, they trust him more than they trust the former Speaker. In my private conversations with Democrats, I will say that I'm not supporting Steve Scalise. I'll be voting for Jim Jordan. And why is that? Well, uh, Jim Jordan presented a strong plan for us, a detailed plan on how to move forward. We didn't hear that plan from Steve Scalise. It was it was more vague answers. Um, but there's another situation that's very personal to me. You know, I lost my father in 2021 to cancer, and unfortunately, Steve is going through a, a cancer a cancer battle of his own. And, you know, I like Steve Scalise a lot, and I like him so much, I would like to see him put his full efforts into defeating that. In order to win the speakership, the nominee needs to secure at least 217 votes or half of the House. The Democrats can't be counted on to vote for any Republican speaker, but Republicans are the majority party anyway, so what's the problem? The problem is that the House isn't just divided along party lines. The Republican Party is subdivided amongst themselves. Scalise won the nomination over Jordan, but not by that much. The party was nearly split down the middle in terms of support for each candidate. So now, in order to secure the gavel, Scalise has to convince over 100 of his Republican colleagues to vote for him, a task far more daunting than what McCarthy had to deal with last January, not to mention he's got less time to do it in and the stakes are higher. Scalise was hoping that once he got the nomination, the Republicans would fall in line behind him, but that didn't happen. And honestly, why would it? If the McCarthy vote taught Republicans anything, it's that they can obstruct a process indefinitely until they get as much as they possibly can out of it for themselves. McCarthy finally won the position after an embarrassing and demoralizing 15 rounds of voting, but only after he made major concessions to some of his party's most extreme members, weakening the power and authority of the speaker in the process. And yes, the stakes are higher now than they were back in January. For one, before McCarthy was forced to vacate the speakership, he managed to stave off a government shutdown, but only temporarily. The House now has until mid-November to figure out how it's going to fund the government or else it shuts down. Members of the Freedom Caucus seem like they want this to happen, but most actual American citizens would really rather it didn't. Additionally, recent events have put even greater pressure on Congress to get their act together. The Senate is desperate to finally confirm an ambassador to Israel, which they should have done a long time ago, but they were unable to do so because a couple of senators, specifically Tommy Tuberville of Alabama and Ted Cruz of Texas, are intentionally blocking confirmations to military and diplomatic positions. In other words, both houses are in shambles. But speaking of high stakes, Pro-Jordan House Republicans have already started rolling out a smear campaign against Scalise. They've released FEC reports showing that since 2011, Scalise has spent over half a million dollars at Capitol Grill, with one Jordan ally saying, quote, that's a lot on steak and lobbyists. High stakes indeed. But Representative Nancy Mace of South Carolina has her own reason for not wanting to vote for Scalise. Um, I've been very vocal about this over the last couple of days. I personally cannot in good conscience vote for someone who attended a white supremacist conference and compared himself to David Duke. I would be doing an enormous disservice to the voters that I represent in South Carolina if I were to do that. I have to say I agree with her. That's a great reason to not want someone to be second in line for the presidency. But in a segment with Jake Tapper on CNN, May said that she was confident that Jordan could get the votes over Scalise because she knows of some Democrats who would vote for him. Jake and the rest of us would all love to know which Democrats. 
Marjorie Taylor Greene is another Jordan ally who says she will not be voting for Scalise. Her reason is that Scalise was recently diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a form of blood cancer. Scalise revealed this information himself, stating that they caught the cancer in its early stage and that it is treatable, but MTG would rather Scalise focus on his health at this time. George Santos, who has admittedly been busy with his own personal drama, says that he won't be voting for Scalise because he doesn't even know who that is. In fact, he says he'll vote for anyone but Scalise because Scalise apparently doesn't talk to him and George is salty about it. George also might be going to jail and being expelled from Congress, but that's another story. So to recap, Scalise is no good because he's friendly with white supremacists, he has cancer, he eats too much steak, and he thinks he's too good for George Santos. The alternative to Scalise is Jim Jordan, who was one of the key figures in organizing the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol, and he allegedly helped to cover up nearly 200 cases of sexual abuse during his time as an assistant wrestling coach at Ohio State University. So this is where we are as a country, as it stands, as of recording right now. And honestly, I think that's all there is to say about that. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on all the socials. Also check out my podcast, Modern Context. We have new episodes coming out every other week. Thanks.